multitasking is not a thing. Don't ever say you're a good multitasker. <laughs> Basically, that just means that you're doing everything half-assed. Society's family unit is in crisis as less and less people are making the commitment of a lifelong partnership together. It has been normalized, encouraged, and easier than ever to just throw in the towel when the going gets tough. With time and a premium, start by spending 20 minutes per week gaining thought-provoking inspiration towards a journey of self-improvement, ultimately improving your marriage, your family, your health, and your home. Is time management a myth? Stephen Covey has said, the challenge is not to manage time, but to manage yourself. This episode of The Family Order is going to focus on five tips to set better boundaries and how to manage time, but more importantly, how to manage yourself more effectively. Welcome again to The Family Order. Today we're going to discuss an issue that we ran into recently. We kind of gave you a teaser about it in the last episode, um, but we had some problems arise when it came to our time management, and we overcommitted ourselves. So full disclosure, we completely missed recording an episode for a week, which is something that we did not want to do. It's unfortunate, but it happened. Basically, we missed it because we let ourselves get behind, and we didn't stick to our priorities. We got off our schedules, we didn't communicate well as a unit, and we didn't execute very well. So whose fault was it? It was our own fault. We have to own that and not put it on anything or anyone else. Along with all of this, we didn't set proper boundaries for ourselves mentally. Yeah, and setting boundaries for others and for ourselves can be very important as you manage your distractions and your priorities. So you set boundaries for others by letting them know what you will and won't accept. You let them know the priorities you have. Uh, this could be at work. This could be family, friends, personally. This could be with your kids, your spouse, whoever. But you also set priorities for yourself mentally. You say, this is what I'm going to do. This is when I'm going to do it. I'm not going to bend on that. Some people like to just be busy. and It's like a badge of honor. It it, fe it feels good sometimes. <laughs> it really does. It makes you feel important. And somebody Wanted. needs you. Mm -hmm. Somebody somebody asks you a question that you can help with. It makes you feel good. But then all of a sudden, very, very quickly, you get off track and you're behind on your deadlines. Or you didn't get the big thing done that you were going to get done the, uh, today. Mm -hmm. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. So how can we be more effective with that 24 hours? It's okay if someone asks you to do something quick, you know, but if you let it happen too much and put a bunch of quick things in your 24 hours, you suddenly find yourself behind on the big things that actually might take a little bit more time and brain power. Yeah, not everything is going to be super planned out. Mm -hmm. You've got to be somewhat flexible. I think if it's, what's the rule? If it's, it's something that takes less than two minutes, you know, if it's like a work request, just do it now before you... Forget don't add about it. To it. A list. Right. Yeah. You, you don't need to list everything. Sometimes it's just a quick, hey, let me look that up. Here you go. Here it is. Done. Um, those are quick wins that we could all do. And that and that boosts productivity too because you feel like, okay, I'm, I'm rolling now. I'm getting stuff done. Mm -hmm. But we really need to make sure that we're also managing our attention and our schedules because there's a lot of distractions. So here are five things that we have found to help. So the first one is you want to establish a routine and stick to it. You all have heard um, in previous podcasts about the routines and schedules that Ben and I have, um, not only with homeschooling, but also with my work and with our children's routines up by seven, um, walk at eight, which we haven't been doing because it's been freezing cold in Kansas City in the morning. So we've pushed that back to more of the afternoon on nice days. And then our kids are in bed by eight. And then that's mommy daddy time um, after that. So we are very strict about their um, their schedules just so that our days continue. And we've found that if we get off of our routine and off of our schedule, our kids are complete banshees. So 
Um, you know, and for another example, every morning, um, I make sure that I get the bed made by 8 a.m. And that, it makes me feel productive, which is a whole nother thing if you don't make your bed. But like, that's a big thing for me. If I, if I can just get to making my bed in the morning by a certain time, then I've, I've started my day. I've moved my body. (laughs) And for the most part, it's non-negotiable. Um, yeah, and, and I've helped make the bed plenty of times. Yes. <laughs> uh, this isn't like it's only you. It's just the fact that it gets done yeah. is what's important. By the way, Schedules and Routines is episode 8 of the Family Order podcast, if you want to go check it out. <laughs> so, but make sure it's a non-negotiable. I guess one other thing for um, our daughter that's a non-negotiable is you don't come out of your room in the morning until you are dressed, Okay. And she has her daily, you know, her daily five. She gets dressed, she eats breakfast, she brushes teeth, brushes her hair, makes her bed. Every morning before school starts. Every morning. And she keeps testing that boundary every day, it feels like, (laughs) trying to get off the hook with one of those things or two of those things. But she's done by 9 a.m. Yeah. But we catch ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, If the bed's not made, we go make it real quick. It's a little bit hypocritical to enforce her to make her bed yeah. every day or brush her teeth every day if we're not doing it mm-hmm. uh, on on schedule, on routine. <clears throat> so we've got to lead that. That leads me to tip number two. We have to prioritize. And I would say if you have 20 priorities in a day, you have too many. <laughs> you have way too many. Think, your priorities are not your to-do list. Yes, laundry is not a priority. Yeah. L- laundry needs to get done. It's on it's on the list of boxes to check, but it is not a priority. Those are one of those things you can do while you're on the phone or in between other bigger tasks. You know, you can figure out what works best for you, but you should ideally have 3 to 5 priorities a day. Otherwise, your priorities are not big enough. Mm-hmm. You're not moving the needle. So Sometimes I honestly think we should all have one big goal, one big goal that you're going to build the day around. This is the one thing you really want to achieve today to, to raise the bar. To move the needle. That's like the, we're full of, full of cliches in this one, but these cliches make sense (laughs) and they're there for a reason. I just think, you know, they probably get overused, but one thing to try Um, is to also put the end in mind. When you wake up in the morning or before you go to bed the night before, plan your day out for the following day or when you wake up. What exactly do you want to get done today? At the end of the day before you go to bed, what do I want to have done and finished? Or if I don't do that, I wind up carrying these things over to the next day and then it interferes with the next day. You know, if you're not finishing things... They carry over and they start causing you to get off track, much like we did. The third tip that we have is to block your schedule. Um, And this can be done a couple of different ways. Um, You know, for someone Mm -hmm. like Ben who works from home and is, you know, um, in his office, you know, eight hours a day and has, you know, emails constantly (laughs) coming through to him on his email window and people calling him. And, um, you know, I always have to check, you know, is he on a call? Does he have the video on? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> before I come down. KJ's even learned that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, is it, block time off in your schedule. So basically, and there might be some people who are in the corporate world st- still that have this, that, that Ben's schedule is seen by other people in a way, when he's open and when he's not open. So if they see that he's open, they're going to call him and stuff and inter- interrupt what he's doing. But if he doesn't block off any time on his schedule that is not phone calls and meetings, when is he going to get the actual work done? So you need to block your schedule for quote unquote work time. Put yourself as busy so that you can have a block of time to actually get the work done that was discussed in these meetings and phone calls and things like that. The other side of that is the way that I block my schedule for work is, you know, there's a certain time in the morning that is a kid block on my schedule because people can schedule meetings with me on my calendar um, without me knowing, you know, which is fine. But I have to make sure I block time out that, okay, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. is a kid block, meaning no one can schedule anything during that time. But then from 11 to 1 is a work block um, so that I can get in a nice solid couple hours of work while Brayden is asleep 
things like that. And this kind of goes back to goal setting and stuff too. You know, one of the goals that I have for this upcoming year is to consistently wake up at 5.30 every morning. That gives me from 5.30 to 7 every morning that I can get an hour and a half of client work done um, without any distraction. And that's the other thing. Put your phone away. Turn off the music or the podcast. Not this one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you can leave this one on. But you need focus time and a trap that we fall into is thinking that we can multitask our way through the day. Multitasking is not a thing. Don't ever say you're a good multitasker. (laughs) Basically, that just means that you're doing everything half-assed in my eyes. (laughs) <laughs> you're not doing anything full on, full no, you're, focus. You're bouncing back and forth between the tasks. You're not really getting them done mm-hmm. effectively at the same time. But yeah. that leads actually right into tip number four, which is uh, stacking up your tasks. And we, we've heard about task stacking out there before. Um, it applies to personal time as well as work. And it includes things like removing distractions um, obviously right now there's a lot of blending of work and home life because many people are working at home now and it's really tough, especially with your kids and with your spouses or families. Uh, you know, for those folks, it's, it's a little tough of where the boundaries are right now, but obviously if you're, if you're on calls, things that you don't have to speak on, you can listen to those while you take your 30 minute walk or you know while you do a load of laundry and these are no brainers these are obvious ones but one big example we had was when we went for our family walk that Allie talked about earlier was this was time that KJ could ride her bike because she was just learning how to do that we'd get Braden outside he could either nap or he could just be outside and look at things and um, he's pretty chill with that he likes to be on the move but it was also focused time for Allie and I to sit and actually talk and think and and we have a conversation walking, um but... well yeah <laughs> but actually uh, have a conversation <laughs> but actually be able to focus and have a conversation yes we get interrupted sometimes but we were able to get to not just to-do lists but also other conversation that you don't really want to have around your kids sitting mm-hmm. in the house uh So it was definitely something that was good. We were getting exercise. We were getting some sunshine. We were achieving multiple things in in one walk. You know, it it went from a a 20 minute walk to a 30 minute walk to a 45 minute walk Mm -hmm. as we kept upping it more and more. So those are just easy examples, but those are ways to stack up your tasks. But you're not trying to do multiple things at once. Multiple brain power. Because that's not going to work out too well for most people it doesn't take a lot of brain power to walk like (laughs) we're not chewing gum while we're doing it (laughs) (laughs) um our fifth and final tip is to learn to delegate and ask for help i'm terrible about this um so part of this tip is about (laughs) being proactive and planning ahead which is something that we do do uh i do plan ahead for the most part. We plan our meals. We plan our finances. We plan this podcast, um, you know, our week in advance and everything like that. So we do plan ahead, but plan ahead for help as well. So don't wait until the last minute to seek help and you have to anticipate obstacles better and cushion how long you predict tasks may take. I'm laughing because we are always 15 minutes late for everything now. Mm-hmm. We really are. <laughs> I mean, at least 15 minutes, sometimes yeah. 30. It takes us, I don't understand why it takes so long to get two children in a car. I really don't. Um, and I'm trying to think of another example of something. Um, it. I mean, it takes me an hour and a half now to shower and get ready, M- like minimal shower and get ready because of all the interruptions that come with it and stuff. Um, One of the reasons we didn't take family photos this year because I would have been losing my mind Um, between, you know, uh, doing Cadence's hair and making sure she wasn't bouncing on the couch, you know, messing it up and getting Brayden dressed and making sure he didn't throw up all over himself, you know, and mess that up, you know, and then get myself ready too. 
um, because I don't have the natural beauty that my husband has. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> um, this isn't an accident. I don't just wake up like this. <laughs> Um, but you know, when are you going to need help? Um, and you know, one, that's an example this upcoming week, I guess, that our daughter is going to go to, um, my parents' house for a couple of days, uh, to give us, um, a little bit of a break from the eight-year-old for a couple of days. Um, uh, she's on her quote unquote break from school for this week. And it's a pretty normal week for Ben and I as far as work goes. Um, we'll take a couple of days off for the holidays, but that also um, gets her out of the house so that I can wrap her Christmas presents. <laughs> because mm -hmm. there's no, like, I can't even do that at there's night. There's no time and space to do it. The same with the elf on the shelf. We used to be able to do it when it was lunchtime mm -hmm. and she was at school. And now it's like she's always around and she's up under us constantly because she's bored and it stinks for her because she doesn't have access to her friends and get that kid energy and that silliness and all of those things she's around a baby and two adults all day but and she asked too many questions if if i'm in the laundry room wrapping presents she's going to wonder why i'm in there and she's going to figure it out she's too smart mm -hmm. and stuff and she still believes in santa and i'm going to keep that going as long as i possibly can <laughs> We needed to ask for help. Like, hey, I need you to get this eight-year-old out of this house. It's going to be beautiful here in Kansas City on Monday and Tuesday. She needs to be out at the lake, and she needs to be running around um, and stuff so that I can get myself prepared for Christmas week without prying eyes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, and we can be real for just a second. I think one thing that we fall prey to here is just that we don't cushion – um, we don't cushion our tasks as well as we probably could. Mm -hmm. We tend to overestimate how much we can get done further out. Um, and then we also tend to want to get certain things done. We have things in our head that we're, you know, that we're, we've got as a goal and we don't communicate it well enough or we don't ask for help in advance. We think we can get all these things done. Like we wear a cape and an S on our chest and, then we wait until we suddenly get really frustrated before there's any sort of ask for help or, you know, bounce something off somebody or figure out a solution before something breaks down. Be proactive about it. That's something we do quite frequently because we are achievers. We like to get a lot done and we're, we are very planned out and your plans get derailed pretty quick sometimes and then before you know it you're way behind the eight ball and you're you're like okay do i power through do i try to hurry and get this done do i need to take a minute and go ask for some help because that feels like you're taking extra time to go get help too so you you feel like you're going to put yourself more behind well i'll just i'll get as much done as i can and then you know next thing you know you're getting frustrated because something else comes up and you're already behind and then you're lashing out at somebody and then they don't want to help you. So anyways, all of this is something that we're working on to get better. And we know some of these things, right? A lot of these things aren't brand new to anybody, but they're good reminders. Um, there's many more tips out there that could really, I think that we could spend all day talking about. But these are things that we've found to be pretty common that we've seen out there things that we also feel like have helped us so that's why we chose to focus on these five so this week's call to order is to develop a time management process or routine write down your priorities and the distractions that may keep you from achieving your goals start with just one thing that you can do to find more focused time to get something big done there are plenty of tools and technology out there to help Turn off the notifications on your email. Silence your phone. Turn off notifications on your phone. You don't need that, that big email dot or that text message dot or, you know. The buzz in your pocket. The buzz in your pocket. Turn them off. If something is that important, it's not going to come from email or text. Someone's going to call. We need to get back to that. If it's that important, someone's going to call. <clears throat> now, stop being distracted and go take action. If 
you're ready for your marriage and family dynamic to thrive and not just survive, all it takes is 20 minutes or less joining us each week. It begins with a journey of self-improvement while you sit in the carpool lane, commute to work, squeeze in a workout, or get halfway through folding that laundry pile. Be sure to check out the blog at thefamilyorder.com and follow us on Facebook at The Family Order. If you're ready to start your journey, be sure to click subscribe so you don't miss new episodes every Monday.